Okay, so we're back. I hope you guys are following this chapter. So up till now, we've looked at sale of partnership. Now we can look at the other side. So I would want to switch our focus from the seller and become the buyer now. We'll become the buyer in this case. Now from the buyer's perspective, we need to have a small discussion again on the concept of goodwill, right? So if you guys recall, we discussed purchase goodwill, which is the goodwill that a company pays when it buys another business. That's the extra money that the company is paying over and above the value that it gets from the seller, right? So we use this equation over here. We said goodwill, and I'm only talking about purchase goodwill is equal to purchase consideration, the price that you pay for the company minus fair value of net assets. What's fair value of net assets? That's all the assets taken over minus liabilities taken over. That should give you fair value of net assets. Now again, the fair value is the value that the buyer will place on the assets and liabilities taken over. That has nothing to do with the seller. So the seller will say, for example, the building was bought for 80,000, but the buyer might say that uh, the building is no longer worth 80, it's worth 60. Or, or let's say the value has increased so the buyer can say this building is now worth 100, right? So fair value is the value that the buyer will place on the assets and liabilities he takes over. And using that, we can find how much extra or the excess of purchase consideration was paid for goodwill, right? And goodwill becomes an intangible non-current asset for the buyer because this will generate future economic benefit. All right, so let's start off with some examples. So I would want to focus that a limited company is buying a sole trader because most questions will come on partnerships. So over here in this video, I'll just focus on the example of a sole trader. So let's take a look at that. Right, so let's start with this example. So a limited company called AJ Limited is buying Umar's sole trader. Right, and they've given you information over here. So they're saying, let's just focus on Umar for the moment. And who are we now? Please understand this again. Right, so Umar is the seller, AJ is the buyer. We were previously the seller, now we are the buyer. So all our attention should be towards AJ Limited. Okay, now AJ Limited is buying Umar's sole trader. Umar has two assets at the moment, machinery worth 18,000, inventory worth 12,000. Now these are the values that are placed by Umar. AJ Limited might have a different value for them. We'll take a look at that. And that's his capital. So up till now, Umar's assets are worth 30,000 in this example. Right. Okay, after that they're saying the purchase consideration has been agreed at 60,000 to be paid in cash. So AJ Limited has agreed to pay 60,000 to buy Umar. Uh, and the mode of that payment is cash. But now these are the fair values. So I can write this down. Yeah, so these are the fair values that AJ is placing. So AJ is saying the inventory is worth 10,000, not what Omar said, and machinery is worth 30,000. Again, differently. Yeah, so AJ is saying machinery has a higher value. So he's giving, giving this a higher value, 30, but inventory a lower value over here. So that's the value that AJ Limited is using. Now using this value and purchase consideration, let's calculate goodwill. So yeah, so our working should look something like this. The net assets, we are acquiring only two assets. There is no liability being taken over. So we'll get assets worth 40,000. That's the fair value of the net assets. The fair value is an important concept. Okay, how much did we pay for Umar's sole trader business, we were willing to pay 60,000 in the form of cash. So 60,000 is our purchase consideration, 40,000 worth of assets have been acquired or net assets have been acquired. So we can say that goodwill is worth 20,000. So that's the amount that AJ Limited has paid for goodwill over here. And this goodwill should be treated as an intangible asset for AJ Limited. Right, so now let's say the mode was something else. I'll just I'll just moderate this case. Instead of paying cash, let's say AJ Limited was willing to issue shares. You guys will see the, the calculation should stay the same. Only the purchase consideration can differ. Okay, so let's just moderate this a bit. Now they're saying that if the purchase had been made by issuing 50,000 shares at $1 each, 
and these shares are being issued at a premium of 50% which in simple words means that if the share is originally worth $1 we can say our share premium will be worth $0.5 right and the share is being issued at 1 plus 0 0.5 that's $1.5 so the purchase consideration will be 50,000 shares at 1.5, which are, which becomes 75,000. Okay. Now your purchase consideration has changed and I'm assuming the fair values remain the same. So what should be our goodwill now? So yeah, our goodwill calculation will now be 75,000 minus 40,000, 35,000 becomes the value of your purchase goodwill, right? So, Issuing shares or paying by cash would not matter. The only thing that would change is obviously the purchase consideration. And what is important is that we need to recognize that the fair value of net assets will be the value placed by the buyer. And this goodwill should go to the buyer's statement of financial position. So at the end, let me also show how this goodwill will be recorded in the buyer's statement of financial position. Let's take a look at that. So yes, now let's take a look at the statement of financial position over here. You guys can see everything else will remain the same now under the heading of non-current assets. You can differentiate your non-current assets as tangible non-current assets. By tangible non-current assets, I mean assets that can be physically seen, can be physically touched plant and machinery, land, and you can also include an intangible non-current asset now called goodwill. So the goodwill that we calculate for the buyer while buying another entity, that goodwill will be recorded over here as a non-current asset, right? And you guys should highlight it as an intangible non-current asset. One thing to note, which we will obviously discuss in the standards chapter when you guys take a look at that, this is only for purchase goodwill. Right, so this goodwill can only be realized if you buy another business. A business is not allowed to record internally generated goodwill. So you cannot wake up one day and say that, okay, so we have goodwill worth 50,000. That goes against the basic concept of any monetary transaction being recorded and needs to have some factual value to it, which is why only purchase goodwill will be recorded. The rest statement of financial position should stay the same. There should be no difference, right? So from the next video, we'll, st we'll start questions for purchase of a business where we'll see the buyer's perspective while buying another business and also redrafting the statement of financial position after the purchase.